Hello everyone and welcome along to the preview show for the second leg of Red Star Belgrade versus Rangers. Uh, my name is Craig Dennett and I am joined tonight by Andy Anderson. Andy, how are you doing? Very well indeed, Craig. Very well indeed. Glad to be here. Excellent. So Andy, we actually, we were together for the, the first leg preview um, and we, we weren't quite sure how, how that was going to pan out. Thankfully, it resulted in a and a Athena win. I don't think any of us predicted that, but it was uh, it was Athena win for Rangers in the first leg. They now head over to Belgrade, looking to um, get past the last sixteen um, round, which is where Rangers have fallen in the last couple of seasons. Um, so looking to get past the last sixteen into the quarter final for the first time since two thousand and eight. Andy, looking back on the first leg, just before we got on to looking ahead to the second the second leg, looking back on that first leg. What were your thoughts on the game? What, what are your reflections a few days on? It's always good to think back after a few days, isn't it? Um, I applauded with Scott the night after it, and it's, it's that's that's fantastic as well to do that on the back of such a win like that, especially in the last 16 where we fell down the last twice. Um, after a few days, um, it's always good because you see the highlights more. You go through Twitter, you see the goals again. It gives you more time to think. Um, and what a game, wasn't it? What an absolute blinder of a game. Incidents everywhere when you think on it. How the, how our hearts get, get through that. And, and if it happens again on, on Thursday night coming, then, geez, oh, they're a defibrillator, I think, by the by the couch. But to look, it, actually, it makes it a better result. The more I think about it now, it makes it a better result than it was. Knocked out the, the favourites for the competition. <clears throat> Going into a... And quite an unknown team for me anyway. I don't know about, about you, you lads on the pod, but um, I found them quite an unknown team. I didn't know what to expect. The, the reading that you do is everybody does. All I got was they weren't they weren't very blessed with pace, but they were they were big big lads. And that proved to be the case, um, which makes it all the more all the all the better. Sorry them for the result. Now, when you're going to go away in the second leg of a two-leg tie, the last 16 of Europe, you want to go with a 3-0, a 3-0 lead. And thankfully, due to, I wouldn't even say a lot of good fortune, it was good play. Uh, we played well. We played well enough to get the 3-0, I think. Um, and I've heard varying opinions on the offside goals that um, Dresdner Belgrade scored. Now, I don't think that can, that's even a phrase that makes sense. You don't have offside goals. You have offsides or you have goals. Um, now, the margins were very, very slim. Regardless of that, they didn't count. They were offside and they were the correct decisions, albeit very slim. But that's it. That's the thing. It's a very, very fine margin. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see how we turn up on Thursday night and how we try and combat that, is the word I'm looking for. How we try and combat that. Now, I've got a funny feeling. We'll get to the team line um, shortly, I'm quite sure, Craig. I've got a funny feeling we're going to be utilising John Lundstrom, but I'm sure we'll get to that. Absolutely. I think it's interesting you picked up on the use of the word marginal, which seems to have been going around um, from some of the, let's call them non-Rangers friendly pundits. Um, yeah. So I think that they, they've, they've um, kind of taken on the mantle that a goal that's offside is unlucky to be offside rather than just being offside. Um, yes. and, and they've also taken on a result. It was only marginal, marginally offside, which apparently seems to make it a bit less offside <laughs> than, than just being offside. So um, yeah. I think I think we've seen that that come in. Um, looking back on the performance, I think we didn't start particularly well. Um, I thought um, I thought they were able to get the ball into the feet of the strikers quite quite easily. Um, and I think it was kind of a pattern, I guess, we saw in, in, in their forward play. And that they, they most teams against us try and go out wide and target our fullbacks um, when they attack us. They didn't. They kind of shaped to go out wide and then played it into the, the inside channel, into the feet of the striker, which I think we struggled to deal with a little bit at times. Um, their big striker, I think it's Alexander Katai, uh, was he was you, you could see his quality um, from, from the very start of the game. He's, he was great holding the ball up, um, bringing his, his um, teammates into play, um, and I thought I thought they looked a decent side. Um, do I think we were we were good for the the three 0 win? I think it was maybe a wee bit generous to ourselves if I'm if I'm being honest. Um, mm. Of course, they had the, the three goals that that were ruled offside that, that we were just talking about. Um, there was also that tremendous Al McGregor save. In the penalty, um, I think we potentially rode our luck 
a little bit at times, especially, um, for example, the corner kick just after the penalty. Um, and that was a an old fashioned um, stramash um, in the penalty area. And I think I think we were a little bit lucky to keep the clean sheet. If if I'm honest, obviously delighted, delighted that we did. And heading heading into to a game three 0 um, ahead of the second leg is is all we could ever is is surpassed our expectations. I think. I think it's fair to say, but Andy, I think a big part of that was down to Giovanni van Bronckhorst's awareness of of the tactics and his ability to change it quickly. Um, pretty much ten minutes in, he made the switch. Um, do, you, do you expect to see something similar to to that? That I guess how we how we played the last eighty minutes of the game. Do you expect to see that being the way we we approach it on on Thursday night for the second leg? Yes, uh, to be honest, you know, in a word, yes, um, only if, it, if it's required to do so. I think he'll set up with a game plan that he'll go and make use of the 3-0 lead. Um, but as he's shown in the half-time in Borussia Dortmund game at Ibrox, he's more than willing um, to make a change if it's required. I think it probably will be required because you've got to imagine that this team's going to come at us. They're going to come at us. They're going to try and exploit the same issues that we have. Now, when you think... Is it? I can't remember. Is it three or four games now? We've that's a clean sheet, and it's the last four, isn't it? The last four I games, games a clean sheet. Now that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Four full games, including a European tie, without conceding a goal. Doesn't always look like that should be the case when it comes to Rangers. Though I don't know if you agree with that or not. There, there no. looks like there can be a mistake. There looks like there can be a wee mistake in there. A home ground. I'm sure we'll get to all that again in the in the next few minutes or so. Home ground with a 3-0 deficit, they're going to have to really come at us. I can see Giovanni Van Bronckhurst setting the team up in such a way that if a switch is required, I think he'd be more than willing to make it and he will make it quickly. Absolutely, Andy. We spoke a wee bit about um, not really knowing a great deal about Red Star Belgrade ahead of that first leg. What, what did you make of them as a team and, and how they approached the game? Oh, well, they're big bullies, aren't they? They're big lads. They like a, they like a challenge. Um, they're not scared of a challenge. Um, and I read so much about them being um, not having too much pace, but they, they looked to be they looked to be quite quick off the mark, especially in the front, the, the, the last third, the final third, the through balls they were playing. Um, we spoke about how marginal the offsides were. Bring that back a couple of couple of centimeters, couple of inches, whatever it is. They're, they're onside and, and they're away, and they look they look sharp enough to me. Um, they're a unit. They're a unit is what they are, Craig. And I think they're going to they're going to come at us with that unit on on Thursday night. The good thing in our in our respect for that is it's going to leave gaps. I mean, you've got Ryan Kent in European form and Alfredo Morelos willing to, to barge his way through God knows who and do whatever he's got to do to get the ball into that net. I think it could work in our favour, to be brutally honest with you. I think their gung ho that they're going to have to come with will work in our favour. I really do. I really believe that. We'll get to score predictions later, but I, I think you'll like mine. I think I like my own one as well um, for that one. But I think what we saw uh, with Alfredo Morelos' physicality in that first leg when he when he barged there, I think it was our centre half he barged about five metres away off the ball. Um, that that was absolutely tremendous, and it was just it was just the psychological edge that, that we needed as a team in that game. We needed to assert ourselves. We needed to to show we we're up for the fight, and I think we I think we did that particularly well. Um, like you, I think they were a they were a good team. I, I don't think you get to the stage of a of a European competition and and not be a good team. Um, and I think I think um, I would expect them to score this Thursday coming up in the second leg. I thought they were unlucky not to have a goal count on the Ibrox, like you say, with, with Rangers' defence. As much as we keep clean sheets, it's never a comfortable clean sheet. Um, so I think I'd, I'd expect them to to have a go. And and like you say. That's the kind of game that, that suits us. We want teams to open up against us. We want teams to leave gaps. We want teams to, to leave space. And that's when you have the likes of Ryan Kent as your out ball, um, supported by Morelos. And you've got Morelos holding the ball up at times as well, just being an, a, an absolute nuisance to yes. everyone and anyone around them, which is which is absolutely what you want. Um, I'm just going to read um, a quote from uh, Red Star manager Dejan Stankovic. Um, I believe it was, it was after... <laughs> his side's weekend game um, and it just gives a bit of an insight into to the attitude Red Star are going to have as they approach the game. Um, so Stankovic was quoted as saying, I want to show Rangers just how much the, the Maracanã thunders and how difficult it can be to play there. 
the stadium will be full and that changes everything. Our fans are the 12th man and we are not giving this up. Yes, you know, was a great result for Rangers, but let's not forget that we too scored three goals and missed a penalty. We also missed two or three really good chances. Rangers gave in to our attacks and that tells me we can get something on Thursday. We certainly aren't surrendering. Now, Andy, I don't think there was anything in there that really would come as a surprise or, or, or shock you. I think um, in terms of Rangers, I think we we had our own 12th man in terms of the crowd at Ibrox and the atmosphere was was incredible yet again um, on a European night. Do you think the players will, firstly, do you think the players will be phased by that coming from an opposition team's fans? Um, and are you are you surprised at all by anything that, that Dejan Stankovic said in his quote there? No, not surprised at all. That's what you expect any any manager to say before four days before a football game like this. Um, but he makes it sound like it should have been seven three to them. Is the only the only thing I'll pick up on. He makes it sound as if they were unlucky not to win the game seven three, um, which isn't the case really in my opinion. Um, but no, nothing nothing surprises me there at all. That's just what you expect. I'm quite sure Van Bronckhorst would have said something along similar lines um, had the, the result been reversed. Well, the their fans affect us. Perhaps, perhaps it's that's the, the captain and the manager's job to go out there. Um, and it's to go out there and silence that crowd as well. Now, the atmosphere at Ibrox last Thursday night was fantastic and, and that's to be expected of a European game. Um, however, if their goal that was offside, goal that was offside counted um, before we before we get the penalty kick, it might have silenced us a wee bit, you know, and that's what we're going to have to try and do to them. You hear it from... Managers from the, the smaller teams within the SPFL coming to Ibrox. The job is to try and frustrate and, and annoy the home fans to quieten them down a wee bit. That's what we're going to have to aim to do. They, their job is to come and try and attack us and get the fans on side similar to what we've done. So there is a possibility that it could affect our players. I hope not. I hope not. There's a lot of experience in our team, Craig. And you've got to remember that. They've played in big arenas. They've played um, in big games. So you've got to hope that they'll, they'll be able to push that through. Our job is to go out there, frustrate them, try and nick one and, and, and quiet them right down. Then there's no such thing as a 12th man at all. Absolutely, Andy. I'd have to agree. I think, personally, I think if, if we score one goal, that's the that's the tie over and done with. Um, I think we were... I know people were a bit... Frustrated is probably the wrong word, but we're a bit um, a, a bit gutted that we didn't manage to get the fourth um, in the first leg. Obviously, we were pushing for it. Goldson had a chance heading into into the last ten minutes. I've seen people say that he really should be scoring. I think that's a bit harsh on him. Um, I think it was the the goalkeeper missed missed a punch effectively, um, and it's, it's came flying at him um, at the back post, and he's he's just not managed to direct it on goal, but. I think if, if we'd had the fourth goal in the first leg, it was tie over. I don't I don't think that changes um for that for this second leg coming up. I think if we score, that's game over. But in, in the same breath, I'm I wouldn't rule out Red Star scoring three goals against us. Um are you of similar a few that, that confident will score, but also confident that, that they will also score? Yes, yes, that's exactly how I feel. Um I think they will score. I don't think they'll score three, but they're more than capable of doing so. However, they're not capable of doing so without reply. For them to come at us and score three goals, <clears throat> they're going to have to leave it open at the back. Um, and, and I think I think we're more than capable of scoring one, if not two. So to answer your question, yes, they can score three, but I don't see them doing it without reply. If we are fortunate enough to get the first goal, then it is tie over. You're right. If only one of the three chances of goals, I would, add, I would admit it, it's tie over. It's not tie over yet. I think that's important. Um, it's important to note that but the first goal on Thursday night for us effectively it is yes effectively it is if they get the first goal it's game on you know but they're going to have to come for more you think we are a bit battle scarred Andy in terms of how how the defence has played um, particularly since the winter break and um, the number of goals conceded especially to individual errors you think we should be heading into a tie? We've, I mean, we've just beaten Red Star Belgrade three 0 at Ibrox, and we are heading into to a second leg game, saying that the tie isn't over. There's that there's every potential that we could lose three 0 Do you think that's because we're a bit battle scarred from from the performances we've seen this season, or, or and potentially being a bit cautious, or do you think we're we're being realistic in that in that thought? 
It's 50-50 for me, Craig. It's um, partly to do with that. Partly, as we spoke about just there, um, the defence, OK, uh, no goals in four games, that's excellent. But there always looks like there could be a mistake there. We've seen that. So, yes, there is an element of being battle-scarred there and an element of fans' fear, I suppose you would call it. But you've got to remember, you're playing a last 16 tie in Europe and there's no idiots there. There's good strikers involved here. So, I would say it's more of a 50-50. I don't think there's a, a sole reason for it. I think it's more a 50-50 between our possibility of potential defensive mistakes and the overall the overall rise of ability of the opposition, I think it's a 50-50 to be honest with you, mate. No problem. So hey, looking ahead to the to the lineup, um I think last week I personally was surprised when the midfield three of, of Winstrom, Jack and Kamara came out. I don't think I could quite work out who was going where and doing what. Um but I think we we quickly saw how that was progressing and it really played to, to strengths, I think, that, that we had and I think that, that we didn't even know that we had. Um, John Lundstrom's ability to to adapt from being that defensive midfielder to being a, a third centre-back um, within different phases of the game is absolutely tremendous. It was something that I, I didn't really know that he, they that had in his locker um, to do that mid-game um, and his uh, understanding of when and where to do it was absolutely tremendous. Um, Ryan Jack has been invaluable for us since he came back from his injury yes. and that transition. Um, and then uh, Glenn Kamara playing that forward role, which I know he plays for Finland, but we hadn't really seen much of him in that in that role um, for Rangers. And obviously with his, I'm going to say, shocking um, shooting record, <laughs> shall we say, from the edge of the box. Um, it wasn't really a role that I expected him to, to excel in, but he's, he's definitely proven me wrong in the past four games or so. Um, that midfield, would you expect that to be the, to be the same uh, as it was last week? Or do you think the performances of players like Aaron Ramsey and James Sands might alter that a little bit? Uh, possibly. Possibly, Craig. I would love to sit, sit here and say start with the same, same 11. I think it will be pretty much. It will be pretty much the same 11. The only one I can see possibly changing is the Kamara for Ramsey. I think he will go with the normal back four. Um, of Tav, Balligan, uh, Goldson and Bassey. I can see Lundstrom and Jack there with Arebo, Kent and Morelos. Morelos. So there's only one space available and it's Kamara or Ramsey for me. And after the performance on Sunday, I'd be more than happy to see Ramsey there. Is it too early for him to go from Dundee in a Scottish Cup tie to a last 16 tie in Europe? I don't know. That's up to Van Bronckhurst. He might well do that. He's got the experience for it. He's got the ability for it. Let's face it. You don't pay that kind of money um, for somebody who doesn't have it. Will he be tempted to go with Kamara? I don't know. I can't call it. I don't know. What I would do, I would stick with the same 11. I'm, if head and advice, I would stick with the same 11. I don't know about yourself whether you'll disagree with me. I would stick with the same 11 because you know what you're going to get. And to agree with you in terms of sticking with the same 11, just from the fact that we were able to rest some key players on, on Sunday there against Dundee and um, the likes of Kamara and Morelos both coming off at half time also suggests to me that both will, both will be starting um, on Thursday and they were just getting some rest in ahead of that. I personally would like to see Aaron Ramsey play um, in this game. If it's not now, when is it? We're, we're hitting crunch time. We're, we're about to come on to how how big an April we've got ahead of us. Um, and we need Aaron Ramsey to be firing on all cylinders to help us to help us through. Um, and it, it, we're coming into the period that, that sort of defines the reason as to why we, we brought him in. Um, we need him to, to be the difference in some games that are coming up and we need him to, to show his quality. I thought he was... Thought he was really good against Dundee. He, he showed that he was a, a level above everyone else on that pitch, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, and it wasn't an easy pitch to do that on either. Um, yeah. But we need him to to perform in big games for us to do it consistently. He's played against Red Star Belgrade away a few times, so he's experienced the atmosphere when he's been playing with Arsenal. Um, I think I think he ha he obviously has the quality that that we know in there. Potentially a bit harsh to to drop Kamara considering how well he's been playing in recent weeks. So I think I think that's the only the only area of the team that, that has a question is it whether do you go with Ramsey or do you go with um do you go with Glenn Kamara? Agree. I'm, I'm probably sixty percent on the side of Glenn Kamara at this mm, moment in time. Okay. But, I, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be I wouldn't be um surprised to see 
um, Aaron Ramsey scored in there at the same time. I think James Sands did well at the weekend, but I don't think he, he did enough to dislodge an important player like like John Wonstrom um, from from uh, the starting lineup in such a big game. So just just to close off the sort of roundup sec- uh, the the preview section of this uh, of this preview, shall we say, um, Andy? What do you what do you expect, or what do you what do you what do you think the score will be? Head um, after the second leg of the game on Thursday. I think we'll win the game two one on Thursday night. I think we'll win the game two one. I can see us getting the first goal. Um, I can see it turning into a bit of a a kicking match for want of a better expression. I can see us sitting in their couches, closing their eyes as tackles come in. I can really see it because I think Red Star Belgrade are like that. I don't think they're the best losers on the planet, um, which I think you've got to have in you if you want to be a winner. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but. I can see it being a case of, oh God, if we get the first goal, we said the game, the, the tie's dead. I can see some some kicking going on there, but I think we'll, we'll, we'll stay strong. I think we'll win the game 2-1. Um, very weird how confident I am in European games, especially away from home in the middle of Serbia on a Thursday night, compared to running the middle SPFL games at the moment, but that's where we are. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I think we'll win the game 2-1. Yeah, I'm going to go with you in terms of goals. I'm going to go for a two-each draw. Um, in the game, I think both teams will go out and attack, or or we will counter attack. I think will be the best way to describe how we will approach this game. But I think we've got the the firepower um, to to score a couple of goals on that counter attack. We do just need to be clinical. We've not been clinical in in, in many of our recent games at all. I think the the Red Star game is potentially the only game where we have actually taken mo- most of the chances that fell our way. Um, but I think we do need to be more clinical. But I, I also think that they will score. So I'm going to go for, for two each um, in this game, which we, which we'll see us go through into the, the quarterfinals of the Europa League, which is which is another big step for Rangers. More money in the bank. Um, hopefully another big team coming to Ibrox, um, and we can we can take it from there. I think when you get to the last to the last eight of a competition like this, Andy, you're never going to come up against a, an easy team, but but also no team will really want to, to face Rangers either. No, they won't. Um, on paper, the supporters will, will probably say, if they're lucky enough to get to the last eight, the other seven teams in it will say they would like to get Rangers, you know. Um, that's not that's not going to be the case. The, what, what we've done to Borussia Dortmund and then to Red Star Belgrade is we went around Europe. The teams, that, the teams that matter within Europe see this. Um, they know they won't want to come to Ibrox on a, on a Thursday evening. I'm quite sure of that. Whereas the fans will be similar to us. I'm sure they've got podcasts who say Rangers on paper should be the best ones. But you're right, there's no there's no dodgy teams. What I do like about the last eight draw is it gives you who you play should you get through. I quite like that. I quite like to see the road. I mean, you shouldn't get ahead of yourself, but what fan doesn't get ahead of themselves? Let's 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 all be honest. I've already booked off the final in May from work, you know. Um, so let's let's get ahead of ourselves. Let's enjoy it. I spoke to Scott in the podcast the other night. This is the time you enjoy your football, Craig. Um, we'll get into how busy April's going to be but that's fantastic we're Rangers supporters you buy your season ticket you buy your tickets you buy your cup semi-final tickets at Hamden um, that's, what you're, that's what you sign up for so let's enjoy it and that's what you're that's what you're that's what you're, that's what you're here for you know so I'm totally looking forward to it so let's get going I definitely am too and I mean let's just jump into that that April schedule um, we've obviously got the old firm game at Ibrox on the 3rd of April we have a potential, we'll go with potential and error, error on the side of caution. Um, quarter final tie of, of Europa League, um, home home leg and away leg. We've got a Scottish Cup semi final, which is which was drawn uh, last night as we record this, um, uh, where it's a it's another old firm game at Hamden, which hasn't been our happiest of stomping grounds um, in the, in recent memory, and then likely we've. Got a third old firm game shoehorned into April as well towards the end with with the SPFL likely to to put the final old firm game of the season into either the first or second game post split. Andy, you mentioned that these are the, these are the months that you kind of live for as a fan. Um, big games everywhere you look. Are you confident in our in our team and, and how we're playing and and our ability to be able to cope with so many big games in such quick succession across three? three different competitions it'll fluctuate my, my, my opinion on that will fluctuate right now yes right now yes I think um, we're more than capable of playing Thursday Sunday 
Um, okay, the last maybe month, month and a half proves otherwise. We've dropped stupid points um, after European games. Now, I think that gets read into too much sometimes. These are professional football players. It takes three hours to fly fly back from one, some of these away places. They get a reasonable night's sleep and they don't play till a Sunday. That should be enough time to recuperate. The reason we've dropped silly points is by silly mistakes. It's as simple as that. I don't believe that there's this thing as a European hangover. So, yes, I think we have got the squad that's capable. And I think it will come down to... The, the league, certainly, the, the league business will come down to who drops the most points against other teams. I've got a funny feeling that the old firm games in the league will cancel each other out. The Scottish Cup, the Scottish Cup semi-final will take care of itself. Uh, Hamden hasn't been our, our favourite place of late. Um, it's a number of years now since we've had a, a happy day at Hamden, but it's got to change sooner or later. You've got to remember as well, it's only one defeat in nine against Celtic. I think what a lot of fans are struggling with is the manner of defeat in the last old firm game. It was the the manner of defeat. It was just, it was poor. It was a poor night. It was a poor performance. It was it was a lot of things that will not bother going back over. I'm quite sure we don't, nobody wants to do that, Craig. But that's that's not that's not what we are. It doesn't define our season, does that game? We're a lot more than that. And I think we've got more than enough in us to get through a really busy April. Yes. I'd have to agree at this stage. I think I think my my opinion of these games will fluctuate as we move from game to game and we see performance to, uh, to performance. I think the first old firm game is the most important of them all. Um, obviously, that they it tends to be as a as a Rangers fan, the next old firm game is the most important one. Um, but the the one on Ibrox on the third of April is our most important um, when it comes to our week chances. I think we need to win that game. To stand any chance of of keeping our title hopes alive, it might be a bit naive to say that with with the, the twists and turns that are likely to come with the with the split. But I think to to keep our our uh, hopes alive, we we need to win that game on the on the third of April. Yeah, we put as level one points with Celtic heading into um, heading into roughly six or seven games left of the season. I think he would absolutely take that, albeit goal difference is a big factor at the moment um, and it has every potential. We've seen the benefits of, of goal difference in years gone by um, and having a, and being on the right side of that. Um, it's an amazing feeling I, I, and I can understand why fans are concerned about being on the flip side of that. But I think heading into the last six or seven games, level one points, you, you, would, you would absolutely take that at the moment and I think it's, it's absolutely vital for us to be able to put the pressure on Celtic from that perspective, I tend to agree with you that the the Glee games may cancel themselves out. I I hope that we will take a minimum of four points from them. I think if we take a minimum of four points from them, I would be confident of us winning the league. I do have slight concerns. I know you've said you don't have, really have concerns over the Thursday to Sunday schedule. I do have concerns over that, particularly uh, where we to get through the to the next round of the Europa League. The second leg is the Thursday prior to the Scottish Cup semi-final against Celtic. That that has potential to be a real drain on on our on our team just from the the magnitude of the match, the potential amount of effort that we need to go in to get us to potentially get us through in that game to then go into another game of, of the magnitude of an Old Firm semi-final on a Sunday. Um, slight concerns just based on how we've performed. In recent weeks on a Sunday, albeit Dundee was the most comfortable Rangers performance I've seen for many months. I think it's it's a huge month. It's one I'm really looking forward to, um, but it's also one that the nerves are starting to build. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I never go into Rangers games being the most confident guy in the world, um, and and big <clears throat> a big month like that, it has potential to. To, to be an amazing month and, and almost create the meltdown of all meltdowns um, on the other side of the city, but it also has the potential to go complete, completely the opposite way, and, and we could be very much looking inwardly um, at that. So, I'm I'm not entirely sure where I where I end up on that at this moment. <laughs> you don't know, don't you? Know? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm going back and forward on it. Um, uh, yeah. Even, even like you say, even in this couple of minutes I've been speaking, I'm going back. <laughs> 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 but I um, I'll just say I'm looking forward to it, um, yes. and it's it's going to be a hopefully a good month to be a Rangers fan now. Andy, just 
just to finish us off, another bit of news that, that has come out um, today. We're recording on, on Tuesday night, um, ready for the pod to go live on Wednesday. Another bit of news that's come out today is the announcement that the SFA have struck a deal with Hawkeye, um, who are one of the, the, the suppliers of VAR to European leagues around, around Europe. Um, for those that watch other sports, they also they also uh, do the the um, the reviews for the likes of tennis and cricket and that that kind of uh, those kind of sports as well. In terms of VAR, I think we've spoken about it quite a lot on the podcast. I am a huge advocate of VAR for Scottish football. I think we as Rangers will benefit a lot from it from the decisions we've seen. We'll also be we'll also fall foul of it. On some occasions, and we've got to we've got to understand as fans that that's that's going to be the case as well. Andy, what's your your thoughts on VAR and the announcement that it seems to be a, another step closer to coming into play for next season? My, my views are exactly the same as you for VAR, Craig. It's um, it's got to happen. The sooner the better, in my opinion. You're you're absolutely right. Um, it will hinder us. There's no doubt about it. At some point in the next 10, 15, 20 years, you, you'll be cursing having VAR from a Rangers point of view, but it's going to help us a hell of a lot more. Um, you only need to think back a few weeks to Dundee United away when there's a couple of Stonewall penalties. Um, what game was it? Was it Motherwell or Aberdeen at Ibrox when there was a, a potential leg-breaking challenge? It was a straight red card. Was it Motherwell? Yeah, it was Aberdeen. It was on Scott Arfield at the, at the line. Um, so there was two, actually, because there was one in each game. There was the, in Motherwell, there was the challenge on Conor Goldson. That's the one. That's the one I'm talking about. That's the fact goes to VR. It's a straight red card. It's as simple as that. So, Rangers being predominantly, especially at Ibrox Park, the more attacking team with the most possession, I think it is going to benefit us. I think the sooner the better for us. The only thing is, I don't know how quick it's going to happen. I believe the clubs that you stump up a considerable amount of money. All clubs have to agree to this now. Rangers, Hibs, Hearts, Aberdeen. I'm sure that won't be an issue at all. So smaller clubs down the line a wee bit. So I don't know what kind of deal has been struck today. I've not seen much in the news. I've been busy. Um, it all depends how quickly they can get it pushed through. I'd like to see it pushed through for next season. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't see that being a being a, being a, a chance. I'd love it to be through though because I think it would benefit us a hell of a lot more. I'm a massive advocate of our um, just look at our Europa League run. Just look at our Europa League run. It's video assisting Rangers. That's what we call it from these days on. So, no, I'm a massive advocate of it. And the sooner the better, Craig. Get it, get it done. Get it done quickly. Absolutely. And I was, I was actually just going to bring that up in terms of um, how vital VAR was in our, in our win over Borussia Dortmund. That mm-hmm. first leg would have been a two-each draw um, mm-hmm. with the penalty not being given and also Alfredo Morelos being, being flagged offside yeah. um, for that goal. So that would have finished two-each and it it changes the full complexion of the tie. Um, I'm going to throw, put you on the spot a wee bit here, Andy, and throw you a bit of a curveball for our final question of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, mentioned, you mentioned there about how um, clubs are going to fund VAR. I think the, I think the quoted cost is £100,000 per club um, to, to, uh, to install VAR. Is it one that you feel that Rangers and Celtic should fund for other clubs? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, for the sheer fact that, say we did, say Rangers and Celtic, half it down in the middle and put 500,000 in each and, and get the whole league um, VAR, and it was seen to benefit Rangers and Celtic more, which it will. It will benefit Rangers and Celtic more. I can't see that coming across well with the other fans. And I think it's only fair that the other clubs pay their fair share as well. Okay, we have Rangers and Celtic, Hibs, Hearts, Aberdeen are very successful football clubs and well-run football clubs. I don't think it's fair that we have to, we should pay that. So no, I don't I, I don't think that's that should be the case. I think if you're going to be an SPL team, if you're going to be an SPFL team, you should be able to afford 100 grand for VAR. It's as simple as that. I would, I would agree with that. I actually think you've got to look to either the SPFL um, I, I, I understand the argument that that's that's simply the forty-two clubs um, of the of the SPFL um, pyramid as such that, that make up that board and that that, that provide the funds to that um, to the SPFL. So I think I think you've either got to look at them to pay for it or to help clubs out who are potentially struggling um, to pay for it, or you look to the SFA. It's, it's the SFA who provide the referees. It's the SFA who train the referees. It's the SFA who have agreed this deal with Hawkeye um, to provide the software. 
for it. So I don't, I don't know if you potentially look at the, the Scottish Football Association and say, look, this this software is going to help your referees, or should, in theory, help your referees make right decisions more often, take a bit of the pressure off them that they're that they're getting at the moment, a bit of the focus off of them as well. Um, so I think the the Scottish FA might might get to a stage where they're 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 under a bit yeah. of pressure to put in some money, especially if. Um, for example, say a, say our both are promoted from the championship. Is it a bit unfair for them to be asked to fork out a hundred grand in their first season straight up into the into the, the Premiership potentially? So I think that's where where um, the S, uh, the SFA or SPFL might have to come in. Uh, I won't throw any more hard questions at you, Andy. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, that that was really good. I really enjoyed uh, your thoughts on the preview for for the Red Star Belgrade game. You're very welcome, mate. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure being on. I do. Well, we're looking forward to the, the second leg against Red Star Belgrade, as we've as we've discussed. Andy's gone for a two one a two one victory for Rangers. I've gone for a dramatic two each draw. But uh, we're both uh, predicting that that Rangers will go through, and we will be seeing the uh, the teddy bears in the in the quarter final of the Europa League. Um, so that's all for this podcast. Please remember to. Subscribe to TII YouTube channel and please remember to also um, t- tick the, the notifications button so you know when a new podcast is uploaded. Until next time, goodbye.